What's going on, mate? This is Riley Knight from the podcast half Assed History here to have a bit of a chat with you about the heroes featured in Hidden Cup 5. All the heroes the players are using to hide their true identities are real-life people from history featured as units in various Age of Empires campaigns. And while T90 is an avid history lover, his knowledge and memory of history would uh, pretty firmly make him a historical low elo legend, I think it's fair to say. So he invited me along to tell you a thing or two about these heroes we're watching square off against one another. Let's get to know one of them a little bit better. King Stephen of England was a grandson of William the Conqueror, and I tell you what, he had a very difficult time holding on to the English throne once he actually got his hands on it. Initially, his career as an Anglo-Norman noble got off to a great start. As Stephen of Blois, he held great big tracts of land across both France and England that saw him amass a fair bit of wealth and power. But then everything changed after the White Ship Disaster, which left the reigning King Henry I without any living legitimate sons. Everyone knows how dangerous it can be to fill a transport ship full of key units, and in 1120, this is exactly what happened in England. Henry's only legitimate son and heir set sail across the English Channel aboard the White Ship, along with a ton of other notable Anglo-Norman nobles, and then the ship sank, and all but one of the people aboard died, which is what prompted a succession crisis and long-standing civil war after Henry's death 15 years later. He should have just researched dry dock, got across the Channel way fast. Actually, no, wait, hang on. Don't do that. That would have been terrible. Would have been even worse. Then 10 more units would have died, actually. Anyway, after the White Ship disaster, King Henry I nominated Stephen, his nephew, as his appointed successor, which would prove to be a very controversial move, because after Henry died uh, in 1135, Stephen inherited the throne as his nephew, and this ended up marking the beginning of a period of English history known as the Anarchy. And the anarchy was brought about because Henry's daughter, Matilda, didn't think much of her cousin Stephen succeeding her father, and so mounted a challenge to Stephen's rule. She pressed her claim for the throne, which tore England in two. Half the realm supported Stephen, and half supported Matilda, and then another half, yep, three halves, didn't really care who was in charge, and instead just took the opportunity to cause some mischief and mayhem. I mentioned before this period was called the anarchy, and it's very well named. Common people, the villagers and the like, they suffered terribly as bandits, rogue barons and unscrupulous knights all took advantage of them. Perhaps this is the uh, the historical basis for the Britain shepherding bonus. You know, they all had to work extra quickly to gather food because otherwise some nefarious baron would come along and lame all their sheep. Anyway, because of this ongoing conflict, England was in chaos, and for almost 20 years a civil war raged between the factions supporting Stephen and Matilda. Even his capture by Matilda's forces after the Battle of Lincoln in 1141, even this didn't have a decisive effect on the war. You'd think capturing an enemy king would snag a victory on the spot, but obviously these two weren't playing with regicide rules. It didn't come to an end until after 1153, which was when Matilda's son, also called Henry, same as his grandpa, invaded England with the intention of overthrowing his uncle, and Stephen finally decided enough was enough. The two sides came together to the negotiating table and signed the Treaty of Winchester, under the terms of which Stephen would remain king, but after his death, it would be Henry who would inherit, not Stephen's son Eustace. And very obligingly, Stephen died the very next year. Very convenient for Henry, who took the throne as King Henry II. So, Stephen is remembered for bringing conflict and strife and civil war to England, and, to be honest, not for all that much else. Rather than bowing out with a peace treaty, however, will Stephen go further to claim total victory in Hidden Cup 5, or... Will his ambitions be cut short by his foes? Find out as the Hidden Cup 5 broadcast continues.